I'm Gumby. Remember that skit from Eddie Murphy years and years ago? It has nothing to do with this video, but I just thought I would put it out there. What I want to talk about today is economic dodgeball. This is something that's been around long before the Rona, but the Rona has added a new level to economic dodgeball. Essentially, you're living your life and then someone throws the Rona at you, throws unemployment at you, throws business closure at you. And uh, how many of you have ever played dodgeball? What's the object of dodgeball? Not to get hit. That's the game. That's how you play dodgeball. It's like, you know, and then if you are throwing the ball, you're trying to hit everybody as hard as you can. I remember now this is something that they've taken out of the schools and they don't really do anymore. But I remember when I was back in school that I used to love dodgeball. You know why? Because you could hit girls as hard as you wanted to with that dodgeball. Just bam, right upside the head. And you'd be like, ha, 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 ha. But that, that, that's just one of the little secrets of playing the game. Because when I was a kid, everyone would participate in dodgeball, kickball, all of these little games. But economic dodgeball is really, really crazy because you've got to practice financial self-defense and you've got to get inside of an economic moat. Like I live inside of an economic moat because it costs so much to live here because I've been looking, you know, I've been thinking about getting into real estate and I've been looking at a lot of things and there have been houses on the market in this neighborhood going on a year and they have not significantly dropped the price. Why? Because I think that the people are in a position where they don't have to drop the price. They're just going to wait whatever this out and you're seeing more and more of these houses come on the market and they're just sitting and sitting and sitting because this is an economic moat because you're never going to see a fire sale over here. You're never going to see, you know, foreclosure rate in this, in this, in the zip code three zero three two seven, go ahead and Google it. The foreclosure rate in three zero three two seven. And you see it's extremely low because people have money over here and the economic moat prevents a financial barrier for people to do certain things. It prevents people from coming to this neighborhood. I was this YouTuber who talked to, who used to live over here. He moved out of here. He said he wanted to move to be next to black folks. I think it was the high cost of living in the zip code because even smaller houses are renting. Like there's an 1800 square foot house that's renting for 3,400 bucks. Once again, it's an economic moat. They may come down a little bit, but they're not going to come down a lot. Now, what does economic moats in dodgeball have to do? Well, if you're living in an economic moat, it's kind of hard for someone to hit you with a dodgeball. I want you to get to understand, like, who has this recession impacted the most? Women. For many, many years, women have ridden out recessions and not have really haven't been touched. This recession has tagged women with that economic dodgeball like no recession has ever before. Also, who has this recession hit? Low wage service workers. 80% of our 80% of our economy is non-essential. This is people who work at Disney. This is people who work at Carnival Cruise Lines. This is people who work at the airports. And interesting enough, I would deem that airport travel should be deemed essential because, you know, people need to do stuff. So. Because during the Rona, people have been traveling, people have been buying houses. I've been watching a lot of videos of people on YouTube who are talking about <clears throat> what it's like to buy a house during the pandemic. So life as we know it has continued on. However, it just hasn't been as much. You got people out here doing some stuff because these folks have escaped the economic dodgeball. If you're in a position to buy a house right now, that means your credit is tip top. 
you got money down, you know what you're doing, and more than likely you have a secure source of income. So you're in a pretty good situation and you have dodged the economic dodgeball. But many, many people have not. Many people have been like hit upside the head with the economic dodgeball. And also, one of the things that is starting to emerge is the value of a college degree. Typically, people with college degrees have lower unemployment than folks who don't have college degrees. That's starting to go away because they're starting to hit people who make six figures or more. I want you to think about this. Women are being hit with this uh, economic dodgeball. Six figure employees are being hit with this. You know, this is part of the global reset. These groups never ever got touched before. But now, every time you turn around, that dodgeball, poosh, 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 poosh. And they're getting hit hard. I did a video talking about tiny house living and I, I did a little more research. And this couple who have a fairly large channel, like 1.4, they just bought a van and they're gonna live in the van. And there are more and more people like, go ahead, check out that video. If you wanna make some extra money, get in the, cause I feel that this trend will go on for years, five to seven years where you could recondition the van and flip it and make money. Cause you know, I don't know. It's kind of hard to get a read, but there's an estimated 5 million people living in vans. And that number is probably going to triple in the next seven years. So there's going to be a lot of work there, but economic dodgeball how do you position yourself well first thing is if you can get yourself inside the safety of an economic moat because like i said this is something that i have looked at for many many years here in atlanta the rich neighborhoods in atlanta have always been the wealthier neighborhoods It hasn't changed. Like, you know, there will be an annexation where they will start building some development closer to a rich neighborhood. But ask yourself, like going over by Emory University and Taco Hills and stuff, that's always been a wealthy neighborhood. Going by uh, West Paces Ferry, that's always been a wealthy neighborhood. And these, see, they begin building these economic moats because I'm gonna tell you something. I, I know this is gonna be very insensitive, Rich folks don't want to live next to common folks. They just don't. It is a strange conversation because I know that everyone is for mixed development housing where you've got someone who makes $150,000 living next to someone who makes $35,000. I'm going to tell you the two worlds just do not mix. They just don't mix. And these people, the 9.9% that's the goal, you know, because you got to hit that before you can hit the, the rich level. But the 9.9% is the group of people who are building these economic moats. They're building these school districts. They're building these neighborhoods. They're building these subdivisions to keep the lower classes out. Like I said, I mean, there was many, many years ago, William Raspberry, he was a columnist when, you know, people used to read newspapers and he wrote this piece in, I believe it was the uh, Birmingham um, Journal. It was because I was, I was a kid at the time when I read this and he wrote this piece talking about parents with their freshly scrubbed, well-washed, well-mannered little kids and how they did not want their kids to be associated with kids who were dissimilar to their kids. And this was in the 80s when he wrote this. So this has been going on a long, 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 long time that people of various social economic classes don't want to mix. And also what you have for the people who are getting tagged by these economic dodgeballs, they have an anthem you've ever heard of hood rich hood fine hood good i have met so many people over the years that tried to sell me on the benefits of living in the hood because what happens is a socialization first of all 
as a per person who's brought up in the hood, you realize that you're the disadvantage. You already know this. And then you're socialized to think that BS is good. You're socialized to be proud of your roots, to be proud of your dysfunction. Like I keep mentioning, soft white underbelly. That population base is about to explode because of the economic dodgeball that's going on. Right now, you have someone who was middle class at the beginning of this year. Solid middle class, had a good, nice job, good income, nice home, and they got laid off and their company went out of business. And now they're about to enter into the lower social strata. And once you enter, get hit by that dodgeball, because unemployment is an economic dodgeball. And there are many people who got laid off who expected to be temporarily laid off will be laid off for many, many months, if not years. And this is going to harm their future economic prospects. See, when you get hit by the economic dodgeball and one of the things is that it can literally tear your financial life asunder. Unemployment, business closure, uh, moving eviction, because this is the chain. This is how it goes. First, you get laid off. Second, you run out of unemployment. Third thing is you get evicted. So strike one, strike two, strike three. Those three life events are enough to move someone permanently to the lower economic strata. Dodgeball number one, unemployment. Dodgeball number two, unemployment runs out. Dodgeball number three, eviction. Do you understand how hard it is to rent a place with an eviction on your record? I mean, it is, it's not impossible, but essentially you gotta be in a financial situation that if you were in that financial situation, you never would have got evicted. They're gonna ask for three to four months rent up front, and they're gonna be looking at you side-eyed the whole time you're in there. And essentially, once you begin this descent, once you begin getting hit with these dodgeballs, your free fall is inevitable. Now, why is this? America doesn't save money. I'm getting ready to do something for Savage Finance called Ultimate Money. And, you know, I, I actually put the outline together and everything. I got that together and I'm going to release it probably the end of this month or the beginning of next month. And I'm going to guide you through the things that you need to do practicing financial self-defense. You got to practice financial self-defense because, see, this is what gets people in trouble and this is how they become a victim of the economic dodgeball. There is no financial self-defense in practice. There's none. It's just, I'm living my life. I'm drinking frozen daiquiris with big booty Betty on the weekends. And I go to work Monday, the beginning, the end. The people who are living their lives that way are going to be the main victims of this economic dodgeball. You're going to have to practice financial self-defense, which means that you are going to have to save money today for tomorrow. And you know, this is one of the things because a lot of people are starting to get a clue. Our savings rate dramatically skyrocketed because people were like, whoa, we don't know how long this Rona thing gonna last. I got me some dollars crossing my palm. I'm gonna keep my dollars in the bank. I'm gonna stop spending. I'm gonna change my spending habits, which is a good thing because you that's practicing financial self-defense. Because if you don't practice financial self-defense, which is, it's a prophylactic measure. It's like wearing a condom when you have sex. You could have sex with that chick and you could skirt up in there and more than likely she's not gonna get pregnant. But if you wear a condom, you will be rest assured that she will not get pregnant. That's practicing financial self-defense. So one of the things that we're gonna go through this course is not ready, is <clears throat> the things you need to do, the, the attitudes, the, all this other stuff, and it's gonna be a bigger extension of the money management course. And if you bought the money management course in the last month, last 30 days, you will get ultimate money free. I'll do that for you. 
But one of the things that we have to understand, oh yeah, there's something else too, I need to put this in there. I've started consulting for Savage Finance and I've already had people who's like, I don't want the three consults, i.e. I don't want to pay the thousand dollars. It's designed that way for a reason. And if you want to talk to me, that's the entryway. I'm not even going to respond to your emails trying to haggle me down. You know, so that, you know, just save yourself some time because there, there's a methodology to the method because when I bring you in to a financial consult and probably what I'm going to do is make ultimate money a free part of the financial consulting thing. Now that I think about it, that makes a lot of sense. But one of the things that you have to understand is there are levels to success. And one of the things that so many people are getting tagged by this economic dodgeball is that people don't understand the levels. They don't understand the levels because everybody wants to go from zero to a hundred real quick from this is why so much of this YouTube, Facebook marketing is geared toward, well, last week I was broke today. I'm a millionaire because that is how you've been socialized that, Hey, I don't have to work hard. I don't have to be diligent. I don't have to put money away. There is some social hack that's going to get me a gang of money real quick. And this is how you fall prey to scams. This is how you have your money taken because the way that I'm going to do it, and this is built upon timeless principles. You start a business, you get yourself a good profit margin, you manage your money, you put money away, you build yourself financial self-defense against economic dodgeballs. See, people don't understand. And I understand that you're hit every day with creative, seductive marketing to get you to buy products that have the words easy, quick, fast, simple as part of their message because the way that you've been socialized and programmed that these hit certain buying triggers in your mind, I'm not doing that. I'm going to tell you the truth and essentially what we're going to do is help people build financial moats and help people provide self financial self-defense against economic dodgeballs. Because let's go back to how many of you got to know me and my story. Years and years ago, I was homeless. Years and years ago, I found myself in a bad situation and I wanted to blame everybody, including God, because it was so painful. It was so hurtful. But, once I calmed down and I began to look at it, the situation objectively, I wasn't practicing financial self-defense. I did not have a savings account. And I was like, man, if I had a savings account, I wouldn't have been homeless. None of this stuff would have happened because in the savings accounts is insurance against adverse effects in the future. You're, you're practicing self-defense, financial self-defense because so many people are about, I mean, and also, there are people right now who've gotten laid off, their unemployment's about to run out, and they got their Rona, and then they're gonna get evicted. And this Rona is impacting people across many different population bases so differently. It's doing crazy stuff. There's a guy in California, a Broadway actor, who lost his leg because of the Rona. So it, 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 it's crazy what's going on with the Rona. And right now in 2020, the Rona is the biggest economic dodgeball. The Rona taking people out and the Rona is taking businesses out. The Rona is taking jobs out. The Rona is getting people evicted. The Rona is shifting a large segment of the population base to the lower social economic class which is nothing but nasty things. Nasty things are waiting for you in the lower socioeconomic class. Dysfunction, poor educations, the worst schools. There, there are so many bad things, but see, you don't know what you don't know. And you're going ahead, because like, I, I get it. I mean, I, I get people who 
like someone who was talking, you know, left a comment on Savage Finance talking about that the only people who could practice velocity banking are rich people. That's not true. However, you need to be in a certain financial situation. And see, this, this is the, the disconnect. This is where I part ways with many people. See, I understand. I used to be the average man. And I, I get it every day in my email box. It's like, what do you have for the average man? What do you have? And what these individuals are saying to me is I don't want to elevate. I want to stay right where I'm at, doing what I'm doing. I just want a little bit, a little bit more comfort. And I don't have nothing for you because, you know, Dan Locke said this at an event that I went to. And he said, I'm not in the business of helping losers become winners. I'm in the business of helping people who are winning win more. And that's where I'm at. Because if you don't understand that as long as you stay the average man, the economic dodgeball is going to be tagging you all upside your head. You, 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 you're just going to be messed up. You're going to be tagged by these economic dodgeballs all day long. They just going to be coming for you. They're going to be knocking you out. They're going to be knocking your teeth out. They're going to be, because during this global reset, we will have a resetting of American lifestyles. <laughs> and if you are not practicing financial self-defense, if you are not trying to build a business, I know many people are like, hey, you know, I ain't trying to build a business. I just want a job. Hopefully that works out for you because the math that I'm reading on, we have 50 million people who were just, hey, I just want a job, who now don't have a job, due to no fault of their own. And they're gonna suffer the economic dodgeball hits. Because, I mean, as we go through, because it's about to be the end of June, we're gonna see what happens July, and it's about to get very interesting, August, September, and October. And then we're gonna have this election. And then we're going to move off into 2021 where all of these unemployment benefits are going to run out, where all of these forbearances uh, are going to run out. And then this is when we're going to see even more carnage, because if you're looking at the tea leaves, the way the deck of cards is stacked, it's messed up. Unless you start practicing economic self-defense. You got to start practicing that you you've got to get up on that. You have got to understand where you are in the food chain. Like these stimulus packages, everyone's going crazy over these stimulus check videos. Who got most of the stimulus money? Corporate America. Corporate America got trillions and trillions of dollars. The Fed is doing double monkey backflips all over the stock market. The corporate citizens. That's who got the money, not you. And right now, baby Jojo needs some Similac. Mama needs some new shoes. The rent man lurking around like, hey, it's been two months. You haven't paid me rent in two months. It's starting to get dark. These economic dodgeballs are starting to come faster and faster. And they're starting to hit harder and harder. Because people are not practicing financial self-defense which is something you got to do during the good times. Because see, you know, I said this in many live streams, and I'm going to say it again. If you weren't ready in 2019, you didn't have time to get ready in 2020. See, when you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And this is one of the things, because I see these economic dodgeballs tagging people every day. I see people who are being assaulted by this whole level. And it's just, it, it doesn't have to be that way. See, once again, we got to start making better choices. Once again, we've got to start understanding where we are, the opportunities, and we got to understand the value of ownership. You have to become an owner. Renting is a dicey proposition, and many people are renting jobs. Many people are renting where they live. And I was reading this article because I was looking at doing some mobile home investing 
And one of the things that is happening across mobile home parks across America is these people are being evicted because the deal is they may own the mobile home, but they don't own the land under it. And it is really different because when you look at a mobile home that comes with the land, they're way more expensive than a regular mobile home. So these people who own their home, but they're renting on someone else's land are being evicted. And it costs like $5,000 to move a mobile home. These folks don't have that money. So what's happening is they're, they're, they're being evicted out of their homes because they, they, they don't own anything. You got to become an owner in the economic game. You got to own some stuff. You got to, I know it's like hassles being an owner and dealing with stuff and checking with stuff. You're going to have to level up your mindset to deal with those hassles because the converse is you can be out here tagged with these economic dodgeballs and literally be sleeping in a van by the river. If that's what you want to do. Okay. But if you want to do better, you want to have a better life. If you want to get it together, if you want to live a life of intent and design, you're going to have to start practicing financial self-defense. All right. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to go below, get 30 days to 2,500, get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Go ahead and get that. And if you want to talk about your financial future, once again, I am not changing the program. It's going to be three conversations about your finances, and we're going to tone you up and come up with a plan. And what I'm going to do is make ultimate money a part of the cons cultist consulting program because essentially I want people who want to dramatically enhance and turn around their finances. So all those links are below. I already got a lot of consult calls scheduled. So the sooner you sign up, the sooner we talk.